Hey, it is so great to be with you here on Dive Deep, where we have the opportunity to take what we've talked about on the weekend in the in the sermon message to go deeper and see really how God is speaking and, and maybe the things that, that we didn't get to talk about on Sunday and, and what's been shared by our teaching pastor, which this weekend was Pastor Caleb. It's great to be with you, brother. Yeah, thanks, Pastor Mike. I'm yeah. excited to sit down. I always love spending some time discussing stuff with you. Yeah, this is really fun. <laughs> and so um, we just want to say, one, thanks for being here and joining us on Dive Deep, whether you watch or listen. And just a quick reminder, if you ever have questions, please feel free to email those in. We really want to field those and uh, help to be a resource really to propel you in your faith and your walk with Jesus so that it's both a personal and a corporate holiness approach. And so mm-hmm. please feel free to reach out. So with that in mind, um, let's dive in. Yeah, absolutely. So Pastor Caleb, yesterday you talked about Jehovah Jireh, and we're going through this sermon series, God, Know Him, Love Him, Show Him. And so mm-hmm. names of God, and yesterday you shared with us about Jehovah Jireh. So let's kind of funnel this thing, start yeah. wide and go specific. Absolutely. So again, the first place that God declares himself this is in the story of Abraham and God is calling him to take Isaac uh, to the region of Moriah and sacrifice him. Um, We walk through the story and lo and behold, God provides a substitute sacrifice, right? Mm -hmm. Isaac has a means of life continuing for him and Abraham names the place the Lord will provide. And from that, we get this saying on the mountain of promise, the Lord will provide, which has kind of been a mantra for the Jewish people down through. And it does and should remain a mantra for us as the people of God. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and how fascinating, I I mean, what, let's, let's talk here. What, what hit your mind as you were preparing for the message and just, you know, going through the word of God, thinking about how God is our provider? Yeah. I immediately thought I'd be preaching a sermon on the physical needs of us as our as his people and the promises that he makes about taking care of that and what that will look like and what we can expect from him versus what he never promised to provide for us that's not where he took me at all okay yeah <laughs> no sure so, so instead of that right, he took you right and so again the main one of the main points of that story with Abraham was that it was never a about the physical provision, right? The physical provision was just a means of communicating a message about the spiritual provision that God longs to prov- to give in your life, to make happen in your life, to create in your life. Um, and it was significant that it happened the way that it did on the mountain because it was nothing that Abraham could have controlled. Nothing. Mm -hmm. that he could have controlled Mm -hmm. except his obedience and what God had Mm -hmm. called him towards. Mm -hmm. He didn't create the ram. He didn't put the ram there. He didn't know the region. He couldn't have subverted God's plan, but God swoops in in the end, right? Mm -hmm. And out of nothing, he provides the atonement that's Mm -hmm. needed, the Mm -hmm. sacrifice, the replacement uh, for Isaac. And that was, I mean, that was just a fun uh, observation that you shared about even to the, minutia and I guess it wasn't minutia but the dynamic that God provided a perfect sacrifice in the ram yeah not well, being blemished yeah and I, and I encourage you guys as you're reading scripture um, Genesis 22 it's a three minute read right there are so many details left out about the story mm-hmm and so why the specific detail that it was caught by the horn saw mm-hmm. it seemed out of place and so as I got digging into it, that was the conclusion that most scholars would land on. And so as you're reading scripture for yourselves and you're kind of going through the flow, and again, context is so important. You're going through the flow, you're following the storyline, and then all of a sudden you get to something that seems so out of place mm-hmm. or maybe over the top or understated even. I encourage you dig into that. Yeah. Find out why, because scripture is so intentional. Mm-hmm. God is so intentional with his word. And, and that's, that, I mean, that's just such a fun dynamic. Like mm-hmm. every word of God that's placed within the word of God mm-hmm. is there for a reason and purpose. So right. yeah, as we approach scripture to approach it with our thinking caps on. And so let's talk about this, God's provision mm-hmm. and, and our response. Yeah. Like where do they intersect? Sure. I think maybe, why don't we divert a little bit from the spiritual side and come back to the physical um, about that question right 
there, yeah. right? What, Divert so what, away. What's our responsibility? I, I know because I've spent time with people in our church family. Mm-hmm. I know there are some of you that lack financially. You're wondering how you're going to make ends meet. You may not have food for the week. Sure. That's a reality for some of the people that are in our church family. And there's a number of legitimate reasons why they find themselves in that state. However, I need to challenge you a little bit because there's a lot of reasons that people find themselves physically lacking that are simply a result of their negligence or irresponsibility or laziness. I mean, God gave you, he gifted us with skill sets Mm -hmm. and bodies that can work um, with intelligence and, you know, ambition and industrious spirits Mm -hmm. because we're supposed to go and, you know, care for creation, leverage its resources, steward all of creation Mm -hmm. in order to create a world that's good and productive and supplies the needs for the people, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Some people just, maybe they were never taught how to do that. Sure. They're they're ill-equipped. So uh, maybe can you connect the dot there in the sense of, say someone is listening either now or Mm -hmm. or yesterday and would be in a situation where it's like, man, yeah, I'm in that boat. How would you encourage someone to like take a step towards like, is it evaluation, you know, Mm -hmm. to say like, Mm -hmm. okay, let me, let me assess. Was this something that was self-imposed or Mm -hmm. externally influenced or that type of a thing? And then where to go from there? Yeah. Oh, that's a tough one. No, self-reflection is the place to start. And I would encourage you kind of write your story out. Um, As you write, it is a process that forces you to have to, provide clarity and answers Mm -hmm. and a linear pathway because we write in linear fashion to arrive at where you're at. So, I mean, it may start back to like, what was your childhood like? What did your parents demonstrate with financial responsibility or provision? Or did you feel like you always lacked or, you know, some of you were homeless growing up and that has led to, you don't know how to handle money when you do get it. Uh, You know, there's a whole bunch of dynamics. Start writing and pull a friend in. And just start talking about it with them, your experience, and get their way in on it. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, some of you don't have money because you've got 16 cats and you're buying medication for each of them and not for yourself. That's just being unwise. Sure. Right? Some of you were never shown how to draft a budget, create a budget, and manage it. Mm-hmm. So that's a skill set. Sure. The other's just being unwise. This one's a skill set. Okay, so kind of the merger of skills to develop, which would include maybe developing wisdom, you know, a Mm -hmm. fear of the Lord, and then and then building on that to say, okay, how how do I steward? How do we steward things in a way that is faithful to bring God glory, Mm -hmm. and and in the process, you Mm -hmm. know, not not create some self imposed pitfalls? Yeah, well, and also you don't have to understand everything that led you to this point to start changing things and being successful moving forward. Yeah, go to Financial Peace University. Hey, mm-hmm. guess what? We offer that here this fall. Yeah. Yeah. I just <laughs> you passing can sign through, up for that. Passing through the foyer, there's a sign up. Uh, yeah. that's actually in the foyer right now. Yeah. So. Or email. Email anybody here and we will get you connected. It's Pastor Kyle that's actually helping oversee that. But t- t- build some financial literacy. Understand how the world works, how you mm-hmm. can leverage finances to work for you. Like the early church fathers were super poor, but they made it work mm-hmm. because I think. God had given them a lot of wisdom and how to steward resources and pinch mm. pennies. And God also moved things and money and resources. But go back even further. The patriarchs of the faith, they were super wealthy. Sure. So what we have is this depiction that like God isn't for or against wealth. Yep. But he's calling responsibility for what you have. And so, you know, if the patriarchs all were super wealthy people, um, and you look at what they did with that wealth, which was to bless others. I will bless you to be a blessing, right? Yeah. Um, then there is some responsibility on our end and how we handle that. Yeah. I, I think Dave Ramsey talks about, uh, the, the poverty mentality, mm. um, or the, the mentality of, uh, provision or the, there's a third one, the mentality of gratitude. And so one, one would Can say, you, yeah, go. Yeah, into so, so the quick collaboration detail. is like, um, one is money is evil, money bad, you know? Sure. Um, the other is like, you know, we're all about wealth and, and 
can all you get, get all you can. Whereas the third one is like, well, money is, is a tool. Mm -hmm. The love of money is the root of all evil. Yes. But to recognize that resources are something for us to steward. And as you were, as you were saying about just in general, like with finances or whatever it, it may be, it sounds like perhaps when we struggle, let me frame this in the, in the way of a, a question. Do you see when there's a struggle with resources and God's provision is it more of a focus on what we don't have versus what God has entrusted us with? Because I hear what you're saying in, about like, you know, struggles and things. And, and I almost hear these like phrases like, well, well, I don't have this or I don't have enough for that. Do you think that there's a pitfall there to tweak it to say, well, what has mm -hmm. God entrusted me with and how can I steward it? Sure. Yeah. So here's where we need to diverge back into the spiritual. Okay. Sure. Um, let me challenge people with this idea poverty is not a state of being it's a state of thinking all right kind of like what ramsey's talking about but from the spiritual perspective god is the god of abundance right so are we operating with an abundance mindset where he has everything that's needed to provide for what i lack mm -hmm. or are we constantly scratching and crawling and tearing our way through life, trying to grab at what we think we need? Okay. Mm -hmm. And so now insert resources into that perspective. And it doesn't matter if you've got all the money in the world. If you operate in a mindset of lacking, you're never going to be satisfied or have enough and you will be poor. You will be in poverty, impoverished, which is essentially you're going to be captive. You will be chained. You will be enslaved by resources, money, finances. Mm -hmm. And then we can go down to Guatemala and we can hang out with a family who has a 10 by 12 wooden shack with a dirt floor and two beds. And there's like eight people living in there. And guess what? Man, they are joyful, happy people because they know Jesus. Yeah. They got nothing. Yeah. You know, you take them a, a, a jar of peanut butter and they feel like they're kings and queens. Sure, sure, <laughs> you know? right. So it's not about the finances. It never has been. Well, and, and, it, and it makes me think just how there's this Venn diagram, which most of it's overlapping between mm -hmm. the spiritual and the physical. Yes. Like we cannot separate the physical things that we see, possess, or don't possess mm -hmm. from how they are ultimately spiritually influenced. Correct. And when we try to do that, we set ourselves up for disappointment that God has never designed us to experience. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we are embodied beings. God made us in a physical body with this physical world because there are so many illustrations of his principles and the way he works. I mean, look at what it talks about in Romans. Like, God can be seen in the unseen things of this world. Sure, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because they're all teaching tools. I mean, I learned so much about just God and the way that he works and operates by looking at his creation, you know, and spending time on my farm and just seeing how it all goes and fits together and, <laughs> you know, the patience and the hope and the trust that comes from putting a seed in the ground and believing that the resources I've invested in that are going to produce something. And then in the years where it doesn't, and man, we've had some years here lately where it has not mm -hmm. trusting that he'll carry me through with what we need for that next year. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> like yeah. Michelle and I have been in a season where we have, man, have we lacked like financially, but we were super intentional with what we were doing with our finances um, and God took care of us. I mean, I remember standing in Harbor Freight and agonizing over a $5 box of gloves because it wasn't in the budget, right? Mm -hmm. But I really needed it to do the farm work. Sure. <laughs> and so, like, we've been there. We get it. Um, but guess what? We're still here. God provided for needs. Yeah. We went without some things sometimes. Um, but we're, we're still here. And so every one of you that's watching and listening right now, guess what? You're still here. But God has seen you through everything so far. Yeah. It might have, been, it might not have been fun, <laughs> but mm -hmm. that's not what he promised. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how about this? Um, take us to the Shire. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> um, we, we got to, you know, walk through as you're, you're teaching about this idea that, God calls us to 
delayed gratification. I'll use that word. Sure. Put a better one in there. Like, and the enemy would tempt us with the now. Yeah. So God's provision, the the bridge of faith, you know, from like connect those connect those dots and just speak to that whole thing of like, yeah. you know. Yeah. So so um I mean the characters I, what I love about Tolkien's work is the characters are are often so easily delineated between good and evil. And I like that. I'm not a huge fan of the dark hero concept that's coming out now because it just confuses people. Like I, I know they're trying to tackle ethically challenging and morally challenging questions through cinema, but I'm telling you what, all you have to do is walk outside and live life for a week and you're dealing with that. I want my stories to portray the the hope for what I'm shooting for. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like sure. I want to be encouraged by movies that I watch, not sit there going, Hmm, I see my, you know, that, that I'm not sure what's going on here. This was, I feel uncomfortable about the way this played out. Like he made terrible choices and I saw a bunch of people suffer because mm -hmm. of it, sure. you know? And so go to Frodo and Sam. And I mean, through the whole story, it's this constant battling with, and the way that I'd put it, not delayed gratification, but Hey, here's the hard path, but the right path, the ring, here's the easy path. Mm -hmm. Here's everything you want right now. And it is delayed gratification in a way. Um, but even in the end, it wasn't as though they got everything that the ring had promised. Sure. Because what the ring had promised was, wasn't, wasn't what was best for them even to begin with, mm -hmm. you know? And so these two forces, you know, Satan will promise you that you need something to be satisfied or happy or fulfilled in life. But that's the thing with sin. It always over promises and under delivers versus our heavenly father who knows what's best for us is going to take us through hard things in order to strengthen our character and our resolve and our faith in him and our ability to trust him. And it may not be the funnest thing in the world, but it's the most satisfying yeah. when you've walked through it. Uh -huh. So Frodo and Sam are the unsung heroes because everybody wants to be Aragorn, <laughs> you know, or Legolas or Gimli. Like, I want to be the shining knight. <laughs> sure. But no, what we're really called to be is the, the insignificant little halfling trudging through the wilderness, just exhausted, wearied, uncertain, and mm. questioning himself, but still discerning what is right and choosing it over and over and over again. Yeah. The sheep who are following the voice of the shepherd. There you go. Yeah. Go further. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I mean, like, I, I think, you know, you said, okay, everything there was out of Abraham's control and everything was in God's control, save for the fact that he permitted Abraham the decision of obedience. And that's, yep. that's, we, we diverted. So I, I want, yeah. like, can, yeah, can come we come back, back there? Yeah, like, to, let's, let's speak about like, the connection of faith. Mm -hmm. Like you see that in Genesis 22 and later the writer of Hebrews writes oh, I know. back to that powerful thing to where he even writes <laughs> that Abraham believed that if he went through with that, which yeah. he was planning to do, yep. that resurrection was part of what happened. God can do. Yeah. So he didn't know the outcome. I mean, it, maybe he thought God will provide a substitute. Maybe he thought God will revive him either way. He had imagined that God was immensely more powerful and capable than anything that he could control. And mm. so he could confidently walk forward trusting. Mm. Mm. And, and and can I really quick? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Hebrews 12. This might go a little longer. Hebrews 12, right? So we're talking in Hebrews, the hall of faith and like the heroes of our, of our, of our faith. Abraham's in there, the man of faith. We get to the mountain of promise again at the end of Hebrews. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 12, where it talks about, hey, you don't come to a mountain of fire and terror like the Israelites did in the wilderness, where you have to fear your approach to God. No, you are children of the new covenant. And so you come to the mountain of promise, Zion, perfect, where God dwells with angels worshiping him over and over. And you can come not intimidated, but boldly trusting him to provide for what you need. So go forth in obedience. Follow him. Yeah. Yeah, uh, man. And that just makes me think like, okay, maybe speak speak to our listeners from the heart of a counselor. Because I think of Abraham 
while they're going up and Isaac asks him, mm -hmm. he's like, dad, where's the sacrifice? And he says it before the mountain's named. Yeah. The Lord will provide a sacrifice. Right. So uh, from, from the heart and perspective and eyes and ears, from a counseling's perspective, mm -hmm. how does that speak to uh, almost like David? I was just reading recently about how David spoke to his soul. Oh, you know, this, this, oh, yeah. this, uh, this self-examination, this self-awareness to say, oh, my soul, do not be downcast. I know I have the the human propensity to to just get mired in things, but oh my soul, the Lord will provide. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so we're kind of made up of four different pieces that make our being. Right. There's our body. There's our mind. There's our heart, and there's our spirit. And at any point, one of those can be beat down, hurting, questioning. But guess what? At any point, you can pull on the strength of one of those other areas to lift mm -hmm. up. So if my heart and spirit are broken, mm -hmm. in my mind, intellectually, I know who God is and what he has done. I will go through the memories of how he has provided in the past or how he has spoke to this season mm -hmm. that I'm experiencing now in the past. And I will remind myself over and over and over and over again. And what you're doing is so our brains are associative. What you're doing consciously is pulling up memories that are associated with the good qualities of God that we know him to be true for, right? And subconsciously, what's also happening is the Rolodex of memories is spinning. And even without you realizing, your brain is filing through all the memories that are also associated with feeling that way or experiencing that very same thing or attached in some way. And mm -hmm. it actually begins to prepare your brain, the neurology of your brain, to portray that emotion. Mm. right mm -hmm. L let's go a step further i'm struggling um i'm feeling down i'm depressed spend time with a friend who is strong at that time you sit across from them we have what's called mirror neurons in our brains like i'm going to pick up on where you're at my sympathetic system is going to engage with you and you're going to help to balance me out right and so god gave us all these tools to help walk us through this season um so, and it's so interesting, the work that Dan Siegel's doing right now, which is, so there's something called a disintegrated brain, mm -hmm. which is basically a brain that has experienced so much hurt or fracture in a given area that it wants to pull away and never engage in that again. And I think that's people who have been wrongly understood God and are feeling so angry or so hurt by him that they won't re-engage in faith because of a wrong experience and a wrong wiring in their brain about what faith really is. Mm. Because of the questions that I hear from people that hold them back from believing in God, I often hear a really deep misunderstanding of the character of God mm. in there. Mm. Like there's some very wrong theology in the way that it was presented to them mm. or they assumed about who God is, like that Muslim on the beach. Mm -hmm. He assumed that it was God's fault that these children were hungry, but he doesn't understand how God operates. He gave free will and he gave power to us mm -hmm. to change things. So really the responsibility falls on us. So this, this uh, disparity or this misapplied association to mm -hmm. something that is, has nothing to do with God. Right. Yeah. Because of a hurt or something that's happened in a person's life and, that's just so powerful to just think about how God calls each one of us to respond in faith like he called Abraham mm -hmm. to give everything. Yeah. You know, and as you're saying, like, as you're saying, oh, there's four things. It's like, okay, yeah, heart, soul, mind, strength, you know, like, here we go. But, man, how, I guess how would you encourage someone who, uh, you know, is listening to what it means to know our Jehovah Jireh, like mm -hmm. what's, what's something that would come to mind to just encourage someone to say, know that, that the Lord is the provider. What, what, what would you say? Oh my goodness. Share your stories with other people. Every single one of us has a provision story and it may look small, right? But it's significant. Um, oh, who was it? It wasn't young. Maybe it was Carl Young. 
who said that most people don't see God because they don't look small enough or low enough, right? We're looking for grand things. But did God give you the ability to work that week? Did God provide food for you that day? Did he provide um, wisdom in a meeting that you had to have? Did he like, look at the small things and you'll begin to see the provision of God stacking up all over the place. But then the other thing is share them with others and ask other people for their story. Like we need that encouragement and that uplift. Yeah. Yeah. So look for the small things. That's powerful. And, uh, and almost is kind of that intersection of where faith and the practical apply and, and faith is practical, but that kind of like from the miraculous to the, the, the day-to-day minutia. You know, so man, thanks so much for sharing. Yeah. It's it's great to spend time with you. And, yeah, it's and great to spend could, time with all could, you guys. We could continue to go, <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, I, I wish we could. But but while we are still here, before you you sign off, just be encouraged to seek after the Lord in faith um, as your provider, as our provider. And we would love to continue the, the conversation. And if there's a way that this has been beneficial or a blessing, please share it with others. We want to help this, uh, the opportunity to be a resource for faith development wherever you're at. And so we want to say thanks for joining on. Uh, subscribe to the podcast. Uh, continue to connect on YouTube. And we would love to hear any questions that come across after the weekend messages. And we'll continue to dive deep together. Have a great week.